Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Tossed salads and scrambled eggs Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are making Kevin's famous chili from The Office. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't play the clip at the beginning like usual, but NBC was blocking my video as soon as I posted it. So, if you want to see the clip, just go ahead and click on these chilies. Three ounces of dried ancho chilies, and one ounce of dried cascabel chilies. We're going to start by ripping these guys open and getting all the seeds out. Now, I know Kevin just said he uses ancho chilies, but it's pretty common to use more than one type of dried chili in a recipe like this, and cascabels add a lot of smokiness and earthiness and chocolatey undertones. We want to tear these guys up into about one inch pieces and put in a saute pan over medium heat and toast until just barely smoking and fragrant. Now, we're going to take our toasted chilies and place them in the bowl of a food processor and blitz until they're really, really fine powder. This is gonna take a while, about two or three minutes, so pour yourself a drink, make sure your camera's in focus. Add one tablespoon cocoa powder, three tablespoons corn flour, one tablespoon freshly ground cumin, and one tablespoon dried oregano. Pulse a few times to combine, and then make sure your camera's running when you add three quarters of a cup of chicken stock to make a spice paste. Otherwise, your audience might get confused. Moving on, Kevin says he dices whole tomatoes, so we're going to core and dice about six Roma tomatoes. And then it's time to address the matter of spiciness. We're going to finely mince two jalapenos and one half of a habanero pepper. I was going to do a whole habanero until I tried a little tiny piece of it. Yeah. Get rid of half of that. So yeah, your call. And make sure you use gloves when you're chopping the habaneros. You'll thank me later when you forget to wash your hands before going to the bathroom. Kevin mentioned crushing whole cloves of garlic, and I assume he meant a garlic crusher, something that I forgot that I don't own. So we're going to practice making it with a knife. Just mince it up as fine as you can, and then squish it back and forth against the board like this until you have garlic paste. Yes, I know I'm still wearing gloves. Garlic's really sticky. Now we come to the meat that we're going to use in our chili, and I don't like using ground beef. I like having little steaky, beefy bits every time I take a bite. So we're going to trim the gristle and fat off of three pounds of chuck steak that we're then going to cut into strips and dice into little cubes. Then I'm just going to do a rough chop through to get a little closer to ground beef, but still giving a better texture and body to our chili. Now in a nice wide pot, we're going to start browning our beef. Do this in batches so you don't overcrowd the beef so it doesn't steam. You want to get good browning and crust on there so we can build up some fun on the bottom of the pot. See how it sort of builds up as it would go along? That is exactly what you want to see. That stuff is magic. Set the beef aside, oil your pan, and place over a high heat before adding our vegetables. And Kevin said to undercook the onions, so we're just going to sweat them a little bit before deglazing with a bottle of light lager. Scrape all that good stuff up off the bottom of the pot. Add our chopped tomatoes, the rest of our beer, our spice paste, give that a mix before adding our brown beef back to the party. Then we're going to add the remainder of the carton of chicken stock from which we use to make the spice paste. We're also going to add about two tablespoons of brown sugar, the garlic that I forgot to add earlier, some soaked red kidney beans, and then we're going to put it in a 300 degree oven with the lid ajar for two to three hours or until the beef is completely tender. Take a minute to appreciate the smells that have imbued your apartment. Season with salt and pepper as you see fit. Now here at Binging with Babish, we're all about accuracy and faithfulness to source materials. So if you really want to enjoy Kevin's famous chili in the traditional fashion, get yourself a six foot length of low quality polyfiber carpet and go ahead and plate it up on there. Tell me that is not the most delicious thing you've ever seen. Top it with some aged white cheddar and dig in. Now this was actually a really, really, really good chili. I had never made chili from whole dried peppers before. It really adds a lot of depth to the flavor. It was so good that I had another bite before remembering that I could just put some in a bowl. <laughs> <laughs>